Listen, I gotta tell you, every athlete serious about getting to that next level is working hard on improving in their sport. You know, most of the athletes I work with are students in high school and college with a full academic load on top of their practice and training regimen. Many of them have packed schedules with barely enough time to eat three healthy meals, and they often short themselves on sleep hours during test crunch times. I've heard it, and I get it. And we are built for short-term periods of super productivity. Yes, we can. When obligations and commitments are overwhelming, we have some built-in bodily mechanisms to help us get through those times and kick things into another, uh, another gear. That, that's right. But you can't burn the candle at both ends all the time. It always catches up to you. What you may not realize is that if you're constantly pushing and not giving yourself some time for relaxation and regeneration, and it doesn't need to be much, then you actually may be holding yourself back. A perfect illustration of this is in weightlifting. Athletes progressively get stronger and lift heavier and heavier weights only because they give the worked out muscle time to completely relax and they provide the nourishment during that time for them to build back. If you just keep working a muscle without giving it time to come back from that exertion, you actually slow down the process of rebuilding it. This also works for the mind. Now it's common sense and the reason why we take vacations, and people call that charging our batteries, right? Now I've always been in a efficiency fanatic, you know, wanting to find the most effective means to achieve my goals and get the biggest return for the time and the energy I expend, and that applies here as well. So in order to avoid the negative effects of overtraining, it's not really how much time you spend balancing your life with relaxation, but it's the quality that matters. Yeah, it'd be great if you could spend uh, you know, half an hour meditating or, or doing self-hypnosis every day to, to reset the body from all that stress. That would probably do it for you. But that's not always necessary. If you would instead just spend one minute, five times a day, using a conscious breathing technique I have for you here, this would go a long way to that balance. You need to maximize the mental and physical regeneration process. Now here's the steps. One, get in a place where you don't have to pay, you know, pay attention to anything, like driving for example. Don't, don't drive. You can do this anywhere and anytime you have a spare minute. We all have spare minutes throughout the day. Start looking for them. All right? Next, direct your thoughts to your breathing. You can do this with your eyes closed or eyes open. Think about everything you can about the act of breathing, such as the sound and feel of air moving through your body, your muscles expanding and contracting, oxygen exchanging with carbon dioxide at the surface of the lungs, the rhythm of your breathing, right? This is called conscious breath. Next, make your breath a little bit slower and a little bit deeper than normal. And after about 30 seconds, then go ahead and breathe naturally, normally, right? And then direct your attention to your entire body and imagine sending a wave of relaxation through your body, starting at the top of your head and flowing down to the tips of your toes. Literally direct your mind to each body part as the wave flows through you and do your best to relax that body part when that wave is hitting that body part in your, in your mind's eye or your imagination. Now that's a very effective and efficient relaxation technique that acts like a reset button for stress and it triggers regeneration of your cells. Now as far as your actual workouts and, and not overtraining, you need to get the advice of a professional physical trainer and follow their advice to the letter with regards to your workouts because recovery times vary widely from a couple days to a full week depending on the type of workout. Now, I'm not here to teach you about that. 
But with regards to taking a break from drills and repetitive practices, we have found at the Mental Toughness Academy that periods of relaxing the body and the mind while visualizing or imagining yourself executing your skills perfectly, it has more benefits than mindlessly doing it just to say that you work hard. You just can't beat up on your body and your brain all the time. You've got to give them both some time to reintegrate and, and then come back stronger from their experiences. For the mind, that is the essence of mental toughness. Now let's do this. I'm Craig Sigel.